Um, so I'll be using uh, Taylor's slide um, probably for 151A last quarter. So we will go through like uh, random variables and also like dependency and also um, means and like expectation and variance. Okay, so let's get started. So what is a random variables? Um, so for example, we have like two dices and then we roll them and then they X be their sum. Then because dice is contains some uh, like randomness. And so uh, if we define X to be the sum of these two dice, then we can say the outcome of their sum could be the random variables. So um, let me see. So here are like uh, like the experiment that we did, and then we will get some outcome, and then we could compute some of the characteristic of uh, the outcome, and then we can call the sum of uh, uh, their sum as x. Then x would be a random variable. That's like a very simple example of what random variables are. And then, oops, it's still there. Um, Okay, this is first time I'm using Zoom annotation. So yeah. Okay, so now um, uh, random variables are defined on the probability space, and so uh, when we are referring to the sample space, as you see here, it's we you, you usually see something like this. And what does this mean? This means that um, these are the possible value for the first uh, dice and cross the possible value for the second dice. So, um, so this actually means that if we expand that, then that means that we have a huge uh, omega space of any possible value between the first dice and the second dice. So we can expand it like this. So one, 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 two, two, one, six, and then we have two, one, two, 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 six. And so blah, 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 we have, um, oops. we have six, one, two, six, six. So the whole sample space is actually uh, 36 possibilities of the outcomes of two dices. And so in the, uh, in homework one, you will see something like, uh, probably something like this, like my, uh, negative three minus one cross, like zero to one. And that means actually means that X one, X two. So we have X one in negative three to negative one and X two in zero to one. So this is what I would see in homework one. And I see a lot of questions about this on uh, Piazza. And so this is how it's usually annotated. So these two are actually two space, one space, um, repeat what? Sorry. Um, repeat uh, this as homework one. As to, <laughs> okay. Um, should refer to the yeah. questions. Um, let me see. Is homework mm -hmm. one question five? Yeah, and also question four. You have this kind of uh, like representation. Um, so it basically means that uh, your sample space is in like, for example, you have x1 and x2, then x1 is from minus three to minus one. And you have x2. So it basically means this space. So this terminology basically mean this rectangular region. That's what I'm trying to say. And so the cross means like the two space is actually like, uh, like forming a, another space in the 2D uh, space. Cool. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so, 
So now the X is different from what we got from the outcome. So the outcome are like uh, what we get for the first dice and the second dice. But for every outcome, we could have the random variable X, which is the sum of uh, X1 plus X2. So you will light in like two to 12. So if you have like one and one, then you get the X equal to, but if you get six and six, then you get uh, X equal to 12. So we could have like different variable for uh, this X and they all come with different probabilities. And so, oops. And so uh, a, a formal definition of random variable is defined uh, as a mapping from the outcome space to a real number. So that is um, like, uh, it's like basically like from your outcome space to your numbers. Yeah. And for tradition, we usually use capital letters for obvious. So sometimes you will see something like, probability of x, capital X equal to small x, then the capital X means the RV, um, RV random variable, and the x is the actual outcome. And that could be any numbers or whatever, like whatever variable. But uh, for the capital one, I uh, usually refer to the um, random variable. Cool. Um, okay, now, um, so as I said, like uh, in this example, like um, um, all different uh, random variable, like the value of X from two to 12 is actually different. So um, if you want to get like uh, X equals two, two, then you only have the case of like one, one. So both uh, one for two dices. But if you are uh, considering some, uh, if X is three, then you could have two possibilities. It's one, one, two, or two, one. So in this case, the probability that X equal to three is larger than X equal to two. So that's why uh, we are interested in the prob uh, probability distribution of the random variable X. It's not that simple to get um, from your outcome. So that's why we refer to the um, uh, distribution of the random variable. Okay. Um, yeah, so there are several different random variable. For example, we can roll dice and then define X equal to one if the die is like larger than three, otherwise it's zero. So this is a legal random variable definition. And also we could have um, like, you can throw a dart at a dartboard of radius one, very <laughs> technical defined, and that X be the distance to center of the board. So, and this could also be a random variable because when you are throwing the dart, then you have some randomness that you could land on uh, any other, uh, like everywhere on the dartboard. Um, so now we will go into the expectation. So um, expectation is like uh, the mean of a probability distribution. So like um, we have different possibility for each outcome, then what is the, the thing that you would expect to get like on average, the value of uh, the random variable X. So the definition is um, here as shown here. So it's basic, basically uh, like summing over all possible value of your outcome X. Remember uh, capital X are random variable and small X are the values. So the values X is here and the probability of you getting that um, value. So it's quite straightforward. Like uh, when you are throwing the dice, you have like half, half possibility. Then the, the, for example, if you get a zero for if you have a hat and for one otherwise, then you will get like half probability for each. And one is like, uh, 
So you can easily calculate those. Like it's a very straightforward um, definition. All right. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's here. <laughs> um, so um, so we will have like um, so we will have like x equal to one. If it's oh, it's a dax. Sorry. Um, so we have x equal to one to six, right? So because we are um, rolling the dice, and for each of the um, probability, if this dice is a uh, noble one, then we have each uh, number to be of probability one over six then we can simply calculate the expectation of EX equal to, so this will be like uh, one times six, one over six plus two times one over six, blah, 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 to six times one over six. So it will be like seven, no, one, two or, one, two or six is, 21, yeah. So it will be 3.5, yeah. Okay, so now next. Um, so we could also have like, uh, we have a bias coin that has different probability for the head and tails. Then you could also compute this expectation here and it will be P. Uh, if you calculate it. So it would be, um, so again, we have x equal to, uh, x is in zero of, or one, and ex would be summing up all the possible value of x and the value of x and the probability of that we get that. So we have, uh, if we, we have a one, if we have a hat, then the hat, the, the probability that we get a hat is P. And we also have zero if we get the tail. And the probability of getting that is one minus P. So in this case, it will just be P. Yeah, I mean, it's very straightforward, but technically uh, that's how we define um, expectation by this formula. Um, any questions so far? Yeah. Okay, so now um, suppose we have a random variable and we know the expectation of that, then... Um, um, so that means it's expected to be hat. Um, no, it just because we define that. So, for example, um, why we define the hat to be one and the tails to be zero? That means, so for example, if you are going to win, if you have hat, and you are going to lose, then if when you have tails, so when expectation of x equals to p, that means that you have a chance of P that you can win. Does it make sense? Because we memory or we artificially define it that the test is equals to one and the test yeah. put in zero because the event of either has and tells, technically they don't have any numerical, you know, associated numbers, unlike the previous you know, example that when we roll a die, it has numbers on that. So you can expect some numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in this example, you don't have numbers. We just assign yeah. a number one. I mean, one to has and zero to tell. 
Yeah, kind of like a Boolean variable in like computer science. Like you always have on, off, like and like hat, tail that you can define just one and zero for that. And so expectation is something that you actually never happen because your outcome is either one or zero, but your expectation is P, which is a number between zero and one. So expectation is not something that would happen that you get from your outcome. It's actually uh, an average um, like description of the probability distribution. So it, it, it's possible that you never get the actual value for that expectation to happen, for example, in this case. Um, so that's the expectation. So now um, we will cover the linearity of expectation. So now if we have a random variable, now what if we double the number, the value of that random variable, then what would be the expectation of the new random variable? And what if we increase uh, each random variable by one? So in general, we have this uh, relation that uh, we have um, so this is the formula. So if we times, so these could be two things. So if we times like double the numbers of the random variable, like by a factor of a, then the, uh, the expectation of this new random variable would be, uh, its expectation will be uh, multiplied by, uh, it will be like A times the expectation of the original random variable. And if we have uh, E X plus B, so it will be E X plus B. So that means we can easily pull out all the uh, constant term outside of the expectation. Like, we get here. So basically that means like expectation is a linear thing on the random variable. And this could be shown by the uh, expectation formula because you have this summation there. So it's easy to see. And I won't copy it there because we are running out of time. And so generally we also have this uh, very powerful formula that said, um, the expectation of the sum of two random variables will be the sum of the expectation of each random variable. And also we have like, um, like a more powerful one, like the summation of several different random variables will be the sum of their expectations. Um, so, cause we are running out of time. So we will uh, like, run through this. So as we have been talking about um, on, the, um, on the expectation, which is the mean of the distribution somehow, and that doesn't actually capture the spread of X in the distribution. So the, the distribution at the right and at the left has the same uh, expectation, uh, the same mean, mu, but they have like so different uh, shape. One is like concentrated around mu, but the other is like spread evenly across the space. So we wanted another um, statistic value that could help us understand how different are these two is distributions. That's when we use the variance. So uh, one possible way to measure this spread is like, uh, like we can compute the average distance from the mean. So this would be, um, like uh, we have here, like the absolute value between difference of x minus mu. But this is uh, hard to compute actually in practice. So in, usually we use like squared. So this one here as the, uh, how we calculate the spread of x. And we also have the standard deviation because you see the square here and it make it the, the order of this, the variance is not equal to the original random variable. So if we have the square root, it will be um, saying like how we can interpret uh, standard deviation is roughly the average amount by which X differs 
from its mean. Cool. Um, so there's a very powerful way to compute variance. So one way you can compute variance is to calculate this, but in practice, this is actually hard to calculate. But uh, remember uh, what we are discussing before. So if you look at the variance uh, formula, then you would let, you can expand it like this. So you can have x squared minus 2x mu plus mu squared. And so as we discussed before, because we have the linearity of um, random variable, so we can actually divide them into this, 2x mu plus e mu squared. So now we keep the first term. And for the second term, as you see here, that um, 2 2 is a constant, mu is also a constant, so that we can prove, pull that out. So we have 2 mu dx. And then this is basically a constant. So the expectation of a constant is just mu squared. And then what's this? The expectation of x is also mu. So you will end up with e x squared, expectation of x squared minus 2 mu squared plus mu squared. And that's how we end up with this powerful formula. So uh, the variance of a random variable is basically the expectation of x squared minus the square of its mean. So this is how we usually compute variance in practice, because calculating uh, this guy might not be uh, easy. Yeah. Um, um, the discussion session is till uh, 50, right? So I think we are running out of time, but um, the rest of the slide will be covering uh, independence, random variable, and dependency of variable. And also, yeah, that's pretty much it. And also the uh, covariance and correlation. But I think we are running out of time, right? Okay, so then we'll see you next week. And so uh, the discussion session will be uh, running like uh, every week we will have two TAs and next week we will be talking about linear algebra, and that's also some prerequisite for the course so that you will learn about linear algebra before we get into gradient stuff uh, that we will use intensively in the later part of the course. And cool. So if any questions, um, the slides, I will ask Taylor to put it on the canvas. So yeah. Linear algebra, not the, yeah, linear algebra. So like uh, matrix and tensor, probably like multivariate stuff. Cool. So see you next week. So you, if you have questions, you can stay. Um, yeah, sure. Um, we can talk a bit about covariance. So, um, so before talking about covariance, um, we should first uh, know that. So, 
So by by independent variable, uh, that means we have p x um, y equal to p x times p y. And so covariance is a a, a a metric or a measure that to see how um, how dependent or independent two variables are. So in practice, if we see that e x y equal to e x e y, then it means it's like purely independent. But if they are not that uh, purely independent, there are some dependency be between them, then you will see there's a discrepancy between these two terms. And that's how we define the covariance. It's basically how different are these two terms. And you, sh and you will see that this guy actually leaves uh, in between like standard deviation of x. This is a bad way to set up. Um, it's between sigma x, sigma y, and this would be minus sigma x, sigma y. And so this is how we define the covariance. But this would be like, uh, depends on like sigma x, sigma y. So you cannot like uh, compare the covariance of like x, y, and also covariance between x and z. So if we could scale it into something in between zero and one, then it would be easier for us to say, compare the covariance. And so that's why we have the, this is so hard to use. Yeah, so that's why we have the correlation here. So basically that's like, as we said, this is in between sigma x, sigma y to sigma x, sigma y. So that's why we, we uh, take it over this term, then it will lie in minus one to one. And that's how we get the, uh, the correlation. And um, can you explain? the concept behind joint probability density function and joint probability distribution. Um, oh, I think you mean like continuous random variable uh, and, and discrete random variable, right? Let me stop the share. Um, Um, so basically, uh, when we are using density, then that means it's a continuous uh, uh, distribution. So as you see in one of the problem in homework that we have, um, say, for example, we have a probability distribution of say, we have zero to one, and we have the density of one in between this region. For example. So now we, 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 we will say that the probability density function of this X is equal to one, when it's in zero one and zero otherwise. But if you think of this, then we won't say that uh, the probability of X being any point inside this uh, example, for example, 0 0.5, as we discussed in, uh, as we seen in the uh, homework, that the probability of X being equal uh, 0 0.5 is actually zero because it's a continuous variable and there are in, in, in finite possible possibilities of the outcomes. And that's why uh, the probability here doesn't mean anything for each single value. So it's not legit, 
to say that uh, the probability px of x equal to one for x is zero one. This is not the correct thing to do because px you sum up to one. And if you sum up this guy, then it will be like super huge because they are in finite possibility of x. So that's why we have the small p here that denote the density. And so density is kind of a way that um, introduced that, um, that there is no single value for each slice in this, um, in this probability distribution. But in general, the density of like every small slice uh, is one. So we are kind of like taking the probability of a slice and then we divide it by the, um, by the width here. So technically, uh, by density, we means the uh, overall probability here as a sum over the width. So, because now this is not a not a probability; it's a probability over some lens or some measure in the x space. So that's why we have to use another terminology for uh, probability density distribution. Yeah, does that answer your question? So uh, um, whatever you have written in blue on the top, that is small p uh, of x. That's the density uh, uh, function you're writing. And below whatever you have written in red, that's the uh, probability yeah, uh, itself. Uh, and you're saying uh, that is incorrect to write. No, uh, kind of. Um, so if you see this as a capital letter, then it's called probability mass function. Sometimes you will see this PMF, and this is called PDF, probability density function. And usually when we are talking about probability, uh, we are talking about probability mass function. And that's when we have discrete uh, variables, say row of dice and the probability of like uh, the outcome being one is like one over six. But if you are getting the continuous distribution, then we will say the density, it's not the probability because the probability of X being 0 0.5 is always zero. And for whatever value inside zero to one, it's always zero. So it doesn't mean anything if you just said that the probability for each point is zero. Um, is PNF same as probability distribution? I would say probability distribution is not a very well-defined word. So sometimes it will also refer to PDF, like probability density function. Yeah. So yeah, probability distribution is general. Yeah. Um, PDF is for continuous. Yeah. So, so yeah. Every time you see density, uh, it usually means that it's a continuous distribution where individual um, probability for each point inside the possible values is not uh, possible. Yeah. Um, Any other questions? Uh, one question. So uh, uh, 
regarding the calculating the base risk and base optimality like it was not completely covered in yesterday's uh, lecture so probably he told he'll do it in the next lecture or something so will we be tested a lot on uh, like calculating the risk or something or like the base opt on the, in the quiz uh which part are you referring to sorry um Which part are you referring to? So uh, I think in homework, there are some problems related to like calculating the base risk. Base what? Start. Sorry. <laughs> base risk. Uh, oh, oh start. risk. Okay, I see. Um, probably that won't be like in the quiz. Yeah. But yeah, just familiar yourself with uh, the 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 calculation, but I mean, the, the formula, because the quiz will be open book and open note. So you will probably have enough time. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Taylor will also be releasing some practice uh, quiz for the upcoming quiz uh, on the weekend, probably. Yeah, we just have, had a meeting this morning, so hopefully you will get it on Canvas on the weekend. Yeah, so you will get to know what kind of quiz we will be like. We also have the last years. Let me pull up for a second. Um, I put it in the chat. Oops. Uh, where can you you can find the exam for that last year and also the previous year? Yeah. Cool. And probably Taylor would up that upload those on Canvas. Well, cool. so if no questions, I will end the meeting. And so thank you for coming. Bye.